welcome to NDTR Spotlight, the corner of the internet where NDTR shine. I'm your host, Marie Lorraine. So today, for today's podcast, I really wanted to shine a little bit of light on WIC, Women, Infants, and Children, a job that so many people in this field are very well aware of, and NDTR is maybe a little too familiar with it because it just comes across as a safety net, um, something that's easy access, and maybe not the most elaborate or exciting career choice as an NDTR, but I wanted to highlight it because we've had a few NDTRs on the podcast recently who have found the benefits of WIC. So my my goal in this podcast is to kind of destruct any stereotypes or biases you might have, and if you are in that job search kind of realm and you're thinking about looking for things that's an NDTR and WIC keeps popping up, give it a second look hear what these other indie chairs have to say about it and know that it doesn't have to be a lifetime career, but that you can benefit from working from it, even if it's just for a year or two. So let's see what um, some indie chairs are saying. So we recently um, spotlighted Amanda and Mariah. So we'll start with Mariah. Mariah is an indie tiara who um, used it as a stepping stone and she eventually became a dietitian. And now she's working in the clinical field as a registered dietitian, which I thought was so interesting being able to make that jump from community to clinical. Cause usually you see clinical as like the basis and then you go elsewhere, but that's such a, a large jump in the field of dietetics, two very different areas of patient population of education and of just knowledge base when you're talking about community versus clinical. But Mariah does a really good job of explaining, even in the community setting, and in a community setting like WIC, when you're dealing with women, infants, and children, and moms who you know need short, fast, effective nutrition interventions for them to help with their children and their growth and their health. And Mariah explains a case where there was a very simple solution but made a huge difference in a mom and a child's life. Check out this clip. Um, and so one, actually, it's super simple, um, but the the daughter was um, a little bit larger on the BMI, um, but her eating habits seemed okay. And so it took a little while to get in. It turns out she was drinking a lot of milk and she started to get pickier and pickier because she was drinking so much milk. Um, and so... I was just suggesting, I was like, you know, sometimes this can really affect a kid's appetite. Um, Let's try to cut down and we'll follow up. Um, So she did, she cut down to two two glasses of milk a day and she was doing just so fine, um, eating a lot more and everything. And the mom was less stressed out and less worried about it. Um, So it's not really an example of a complex case, but really just being there to reassure them. And it could be something so simple that could be causing the problem. Very simple, very simple cut down on milk. But we as NDTRs know how much more that means thinking about the nutrient deficiencies with iron and how that can affect the growth of a child and all of those nuances. So simple message, but really avoiding so many complicated issues in the future. So there's a lot that you can do with WIC. It's just how you think about it. You do simplify the message of nutrition, but just if you really sit down and think about what you're preventing in the long term, it is it's a very it can be a very satisfying, satisfying experience and satisfying job knowing that you're making really good impacts in somebody's life. And so another stigma that might come with working at WIC is I don't want to get stuck there. I don't want to start working at WIC and then not be able to find anything else because it is a comfortable job, right? And there's good pay, good benefits. But if you are in the mindset of, I need to accomplish this goal and reach it and not get stuck and you're scared WIC is going to be that quick stand in your career, it doesn't have to be. It really depends on you. And Mariah is an example of how it's not quick stand. Check out this clip setting that goal back then of becoming an RD and then reassessing that goal and being like, is this what I still want after this many years? And it was. And so that's kind of what pushed me forward was originally having that goal and then just being in the nutrition field and deciding, yes, this is still what I want to do. So just pausing and reassessing those goals is huge. And 
I think that's great for any, any area, any area of the career that you're in just stopping and like, is this, is the goal I originally had what I still want to do? And for her, it was the original goal of becoming a dietitian stayed for her. But sometimes when you reassess that goal, you might realize I don't need to be a dietitian to do what I want to do. And I relate so much to Mariah in this because I had a similar situation starting at WIC as an NDTR. And then I had to reassess my goal. I was like, do I want to stay here? Do I like being an NDTR? Or do I want to continue and do my original goal of becoming a dietitian? And the answer was yes, because the things I wanted to do required that RDN credential. However, if it was a different story and I didn't need the RDN credential, I would have been happy to stay in NDTR. So reassess those goals and see where you are and how that fits you. And reassessing those goals is a great way not to get stuck really anywhere in life. And then the next really great thing about WIC is just the continual education and the experience that you gain. It's not, it's not worthless, right? So you have this great time just learning pediatric nutrition. Really, you learn the growth charts for children ages one through five. You figure out like, you understand what's recommended for when they can start eating solid foods, how to introduce those solid foods. You dip into nutrition allergies and food allergies and also part of nutrition, which is so, so encouraging and, and just nice to take that time to study and work with and see on a day-to-day. Because typically speaking, if you're not studying pediatrics, you're studying adult nutrition most of the time. So it's a specialty. And so getting a foundation that at WIC, it's pretty cool that you have that you know foundation in that specialty of pediatrics. And so with that, you have that experience, but Mariah was also able to build even more because she applied to become a dietitian. So she was looking for a dietetic internship and she decided to do a distance one. So build your own, which always makes me, I don't know how people do it, but she did it. And she found that working at WIC paid off. Check out this clip. With that program, I was in contact with the director because they were like make sure you kind of stand out and like make sure they know your name and everything and so I contacted them with just general questions about the program um, and found out that they have prior assessed learning credit Um, so if you like I got pretty much my whole community rotation waived because I had three I think two to three years at WIC at this point Um, so I was able to get that waived so I was really able to focus on clinical and food service um, and the business and entrepreneurship rotation that they um, provided. And so that was really nice considering I knew quite a bit about the community and nutrition already. So win, win, win. She was able to impact and change people's lives. She was able to not get stuck and be able to progress in her goal. And she was able to use the experience she gained at WIC to take off community rotations in her dietetic internship so she can dive into other areas of interest that she had, which clearly is more so clinical as she's a dietitian in a clinical setting now. And so I want to go back to this idea of pediatrics, right? And WIC being kind of such a, such a specific population group and the growth that you get in that. And and Amanda, our next NDTR that we recently spotlighted is also working at WIC. She started as an NDTR and she's now progressing to become a dietitian registered. But there's this specialty that you get in the WIC, in a WIC facility, in a WIC clinic of breastfeeding. And when you think about breastfeeding, there's, there's not much of it, at least for me in the education um, for dietetics. But when you get to work at WIC, you are saturated in it because you're constantly seeing women who are given the choice of formula feed and breastfeed. Not that one is better than the other, but it gives you the opportunity to really dive into this beautiful world of like our first nutrients as kids, as, as infants, this fuel of milk that allows babies to grow in so quickly, so quickly. And so, and then what's also on top of that, what's great is you're working with a population, you're working with moms who are tired and busy, and also it's a lower income. So there's all of these barriers that you have to really begin to think through to make solutions, interventions, and coaching behavioral change realistic for those clients. And breastfeeding is one of them. So Amanda kind of talks a little bit of about the barriers that she's seen that these clients have when it comes to breastfeeding. Because they're used to formula feeding. We have other barriers as maybe mom or 
I mean, not say mom, um, the grandma or dad doesn't want them to breastfeed. So we have to work through those barriers and challenges. The most common fear we see is, is it going to be painful? Is it going to be worth it? It's another one going back to work because our population is low income. So they have to go back to work as soon as possible. So that's another major concern. But we have so many promotional services in our district, which is one of our peer counselors. You have the CLCs. Um, you also have the pump loan program. So we're able to like loan out a um, hospital grade pump and they can use it as long as they're breastfeeding. And we do monthly checkups to see if the pump's still working. We, um, we make sure that, like I said, it's still working. And if they aren't using it anymore, they can return it. We have different prenatal classes. So just the knowledge you gain about breastfeeding is so cool. And then, you know, I'm, I hope that you know some babies in your life, some people who are pregnant, you have that nice knowledge in the back of your head from working at WIC that you'll gain, whether you're a man or a female. And then on top of that, on top of that, there's so much continual education that WIC provides. It's ridiculous. And the co- continuing this conversation about breastfeeding, there's a credential that you can get. And if you work at most weeks long enough, they will pay for you to get this credential. And Amanda is going to talk a little bit about that. It was very exciting. Um, but with the Athens district, they, after a year of employment, they give you the opportunity if budget allows to take this course. And they actually give you an eight hour work day for you just to do your studies. And they have someone else in the district come cover for your clients. So it's not like you're stressed out. So you can do the, watch the videos because it's an online course. We watched videos, took the practice test, and finally took the exam all on like work hours. So we didn't have to do any extra outside unless we wanted to. The last thing I have to highlight about WIC is they do have an internship, a dietetic internship for WIC employees. And this internship is very competitive like most, but what makes it stand out so much is that the benefits are ridiculous. And I'm gonna let Amanda shine a little bit of light on what those are. How an average week looks like for me is I have at least 16 hours of dedicated clinic days or hours and then 24 internship hours. So what that looks like is two days out of the week, I will go to one of my clinics in Jackson County. And then the other three, I'm normally at district and I'm working from district, getting my assignments done with the help of my preceptor and I'll pop and I'll be the same for when I go into the next rotations for food service and clinical as well. So we wow. get full-time pay still full-time benefits. And that's where that contract comes in that we talked about earlier. Um, and so there's so much opportunity at WIC and just because you work at WIC doesn't mean you're less than, um, you can still do great things as an NDTR and make yourself known. Amanda also, uh, interns, she has interns come and future students coming and sitting in with her and seeing what she's doing. And she was recently recognized as nutrition and dietetics technician of the year for Georgia, for the Academy in Georgia. And this is what they said about her. It says, Amanda is motivated and goal-driven. She sets goals for herself and works hard to achieve them. This has been shown as she's obtained her NDTR, CLC, and has a current intern with the State of GA Public Health WIC program, where she is employed as a WIC nutritionist in Jackson County, Georgia. Amanda loves sharing her passion and others and rec- encourages them in their nutrition path and career. This is evidenced through her role in the UGA mentor program and WIC practicums. Amanda takes pride in her knowledge and is gifted in sharing with her clients to help guide them towards healthy goals and lifestyle changes. And she works as a WIC nutritionist. So I say all this, I put all these, I made this podcast, this podcast episode specifically highlighting WIC because I want to destruct that stigma. And so if you're thinking about WIC, if you're looking, if you're in that job search right now and what keeps popping up, don't overlook it. Don't glaze over it. Consider it and see and, and see how it can impact your lives in your career. And if this episode wasn't enough, I encourage you to check out Mariah's full episode, to check out Amanda's full episode. And I will also link in the show notes and description box below other NDTRs who have had experience at WIC. And I encourage you just to listen, hear their story and know that it's not a long-term thing. You can try it for a year or two and see if you like it, see if it's a good fit for you. And that is all I have for you guys. I really appreciate your likes, your interest in this podcast. Please keep watching it, share it with other 
future nutrition professionals, NDTRs, let them know that there is a community of NDTRs out here doing really awesome things. And have to mention our merch is still up and running. So if you want to show off your credential, do so buy a sticker for your laptop, a t-shirt, a bag. We have awesome little fun designs there that just point out the NDTR credential so people can know what they are, know what it is. They can ask about it and you can let them know that you are the future of dietetics. Is that too much to say? I don't think so. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for your listening ears.